afternoon, uh, liberty uh, loving friends. Uh, my name is Paolo, and uh, we, I am with uh, the Italian radio in Florida. We have today from directly from India, Dr. Power, that uh, we are going to talk to about uh, uh, the situation about uh, India and also how they have been uh, treating this uh, cold, deadly disease that unfortunately has caused so many challenges in the whole world. So let me introduce to you uh, Dr. Power. And Dr. Power, if you could just say a few things about yourself, and then we are going to ask you a couple of questions, if it's OK with you. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. OK, do you want to just tell our audience uh, a little bit about yourself and uh, what uh, you have been uh, doing lately? And then we start with the question, or do you want me to start with the question immediately? Uh, so let me introduce myself briefly. So I'm Dr. Dilip Pawar, uh, coming from Mumbai, India. Uh, I'm a physician by qualification and uh, trained in super specialized in clinical pharmacology and oncology. And I'm a cancer research scientist and I have done a lot of research in cancer. So one of my goals is to uh, uh, prevent cancer spread that is called preventive oncology. So we are aiming doing a lot of screening works throughout the country and as well as abroad so that we can inhibit the spread of uh, cancer itself. So we have screened a large case of breast cancers and I'm happy to inform that our group also has Guinness Book of World Record in screening the largest cases of breast cancers in the world. And, and uh, last two weeks back, we had also organized a large uh, global cancer awareness run in which 115 countries participated. And we have created another Guinness Book of World Record wherein so many people participated and uploaded that videos. So this is a brief background about myself. And last seven, eight months, I've been working for uh, COVID infection are trying to treat patient and more importantly we are giving emphasis on how we can prevent and we did an indigenous uh, research uh, uh, to understand the role of steam inhalation and how much e effective it is in prevention of spread of covid infection as well as treatment so we did two clinical trials the details we can discuss later but we have found out that steam inhalation is also equally important in prevention. Oh, that's great. I mean, uh, you, okay, let's start with the questions, okay, doctor? You just mentioned uh, about cancer and what you have done uh, in, uh, in your field, which is great. Uh, uh, and I guess uh, we can talk about this another time. What we are focusing about today, as you know, is uh, COVID-19. And you said that uh, you have found uh, great results with, uh, 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 this inhalation, uh, uh, inhalation of uh, of uh, what? Uh, it's just uh, steam. Uh, that's about it. Yeah. So it is a steam inhalation. So we all know that uh, this virus gets killed uh, between fifty-eight to sixty degrees centigrade, and there are several studies done with humidity and heat. The virus gets killed faster. So when you take steam inhalation. The steam itself is hot, somewhere around 80 to 90 degrees centigrade. And when you inhale, okay, we inhale through nose and release through mouth. So the viruses, the spread we all know is most common through nasal root, oral root, and very uh, rarely through eyes. So, so when there's inhalation of the, the virus is there in your nasal tract, and when you inhale steam, so there is first impact of direct heat due to steam which is more than 60 degrees centigrade, and thereby we kill directly the virus. So this is the first effect. The second effect, when you take steam inhalation, there is generation of heat shock proteins. And this heat shock proteins again increases the immunity of the person so that local immunity is generated, which will again prevent infection. The third important uh, point that it stimulates because you are taking steam inhalation, it, it stimulates inflammation due to which there is 
there is tenfold time increase in your defense cells, which are called as either T cells and natural killer cells. So there is increase in 10 times of these cells, which will again directly act on the virus and thereby it will kill, uh, kill the virus. And lastly, because of steam inhalation, it will also produce respiratory alkalosis. And this virus is known not to survive in respiratory alkalosis, thereby it will make the virus very weak so that the multiplication doesn't take place. And thereby, if you take regular stimulation, you will definitely reduce the viral load and thereby less infection to the person, and thereby less chance of spreading the infection. I mean, what you're saying is fantastic. Uh, then we are just going to ask you a little bit more about it. But let me see uh, uh, that I do understand. So you have been using uh, this protocol in, uh, in, with your patients. And uh, do you have uh, results all the time? Do, what kind of a percentage of good results do you have? And then we're going to go into specifics. Yeah. So, so when, when we first evaluated, and, and this is evidence-based medicines, so we need to generate evidence. And we did two studies, two small uh, pilot clinical trials. One was in large Mumbai hospital, and which was a COVID hospital, and second in the large medical institute. So in the medical institute, we saw the, the incidence of infection was very high amongst the doctors. And when we started this stimulation, there was initially in the two months, there was about 90% reduction itself in the doctors. And when we did in the quarantine centers, the, 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 in, the incidence of infection reduced a lot and the percentage of the patient getting uh, negative for COVID testing also reduced a lot. So overall we saw that as a huge benefit to the patient, those who have been infected. But overall when we did a lot of community studies, and when we gave this TMAS and in community in Mumbai, as you know, a lot of clusters and the density of population is very high. And when this stimulation was given in this kind of communities, we saw the reduction was very high, close to 70 to 80 percent. Wow. Well, uh, uh, it just came into my mind that when I was uh, a child, and, and we are not talking about 10 years ago, you know, we are talking about a little bit more than that. Uh, so 60 I years still ago, see, I uh, still see you are a child. That's okay. Okay, when I was a child, let's let, let's stick with that. When I was a child, I remember that uh, whenever we had a cold, uh, uh, both myself, my brother, or our cousins, I remember that our grandmother used to do exactly, basically, what you're talking about. She would boil some water and and then put a a, a, a towel on top of our head, and we were supposed to be there and inhale that. And uh, uh, it would solve uh, the cold, uh, you know, whatever it was. I mean, that's uh, exciting that uh, you have found out uh, that something so simple really actually can, uh, can help uh, those people, like you said, even the medical uh, 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 doctors in this institute, they have uh, this great result. So it, that's exciting, you know, that's very exciting. So what you're saying, is this going to help even to prevent, because you used that word before you said prevention. Is this going yeah. to help also to prevent uh, the, the spreading? Yes, so we are giving more emphasis on prevention because now most of the countries that the, the lockdown is over and people have started going out. So what we advise at least doing two times steam inhalation it's helping a lot as a prophylaxis, that is for prevention. And what we see, in fact, India is the second largest cases in the world, but now you see dramatically, even the, the, the congested cities like Mumbai, the incidence of cases have dramatically come down. So most of the people are taking steam inhalation uh, in, in India, and a lot of agencies are now promoting uh, steam inhalation. In fact, there are some organization who are organizing uh, steam week. So they are, they are encouraging people to come and do steam therapy for a week so that they develop this habit and practice of steam inhalation. And we have seen in many pockets, the incidents have come down. So it is very useful as a preventive uh, measure. Okay, as, 
Then we are going to talk about a cure, but as a prevention, how many times would you suggest a doctor that uh, an individual uh, does that like on a weekly basis, uh, on, a, on a daily basis, uh, 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 and what, more or less how long also this, uh, this uh, inhalation uh, should last? Yeah. So what we advise as a prevention, we advise at least those who are going out uh, for day-to-day -day work. So at least they should do twice a day in the morning and the evening. And each time they should do at least for four to five minutes or at least for 60 breaths. So 60 times simple inhalation and then slowly exhalation. So 60 times inhalation and exhalation. So that's what we uh, give the count around 60 each time and twice a day. But those who become positive when there are mild cases, so in those people, we, we advise them to at least do four to five times a day. So that helps them to cure faster and the viral load comes down very fast. So for prophylaxis, we advise at least twice a day and those who are positive and having mild symptoms, and definitely four to five times a day. So uh, what I suggest, or what I suggested, what we were doing before when we are young, is that basically the process that we should use, you know, you got the pot there with the water that it, and then put a towel over your head. So the, okay, so that's uh, whatever it was uh, good enough uh, 60 years ago in, in Italy, it's uh, really actually helping uh, not only to prevent, but also to cure this virus. Is that what you're saying? Yes. yes. So sometimes what happens, something which is basic, something which is easy, we tend to sometimes overlook that. And that yeah. was precisely what we did. We saw the same thing. And then we did a lot of literature search. And it has been seen that the virus gets killed in this heat as a simple technique. So we have a simple steamers available. And you rightly said, you put a towel and take steam inhalation inside, that is very effective. So it is something, is not new, but something which is rediscovered. It's repurposed of using the same thing for what we used to do for common cold. So why not we do for COVID treatment as well? That's great. I mean, uh, this is really something that we should touch. Uh, and like you agree upon, we, we are grateful that we can touch about before, again uh, later on. So uh, how is uh, the, the, the government, because you, you probably understand what, we live in Florida right now, but both uh, Fabrizio and myself, uh, we are from Italy. And Italy, as you probably know, it has been uh, affected uh, uh, seriously, not as seriously actually as they tell us because they like to enlarge the situation because uh, they want to sell medication. They want to vaccinate every, everybody and whatever. So, but can you can you tell us a little bit how is uh, 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 the government in India? You know, how's the medical um, professions there? Your colleagues uh, are they accepting what you are saying with uh, open arms uh, and, and gratefully uh, uh, seeing uh, the possibility to help uh, a lot of people with a very limited resources? or they are trying to boycott what you have uh, uh, um, find out? Oh, uh, no, no, no. So in fact, uh, most of the doctors in India who are treating, most of the doctors themselves are taking steam for prevention, including myself and a lot of my colleagues. So all of them are taking steam inhalation. And we also promote, uh, whenever we have a lot of webinars and conference and online meetings, and a lot of doctors are promoting that. A lot of doctors are even writing in the prescription that takes steam inhalation for so many times a day. So, so that is again, the doctors are promoting it. And in fact, in the uh, earlier times when, when the pandemic was starting, even, even our government was encouraging people to take steam. But that time it was a general suggestion, but now we have done the studies and we have come out with the data so we are informing based on the data it will be taken. On the positive side, the doctors are themselves convinced and they are themselves taking as a prophylaxis and thereby they are also promoting to all the patients. Okay, uh, let me ask you then uh, uh, about the government. You know, I already said that 
but uh, even in Italy, uh, we are going back uh, to, to, ex to, to the knowledge that we have and what we have been uh, experiencing, you know, in the last uh, few months. Uh, like uh, in Italy, they are stopping anything else uh, that is a pharmaceutical, uh, uh, you know, pharmaceutical product. They are not promoting anything like, for example, vitamin C would be very helpful, vitamin E, uh, vitamin D, vitamin K, you know, things like that. They are not promoting anything like that, but they are just saying, let's wait for the vaccines. You know, they want to vaccinate everybody. So how's the situation in India? Is the government uh, uh, pushing anything uh, uh, besides what we have been talking about, or, or they are with open arm accepting uh, what uh, you have uh, come across with? Uh, yes. So the good uh, news is that the government is accepting what we are promoting. So STEAM uh, has been a part of a lot of our traditional treatment. Uh, you know that Ayurveda uh, is a traditional uh, medicine in India. And, and, uh, and yoga, the yogasanas are again traditional, uh, which has been ancient of 5,000 years old. Science, which is available in India. And many places, steam inhalation or doing some kind of jal nidi, that is pouring water through one nostril and taking it from other, it is in practice very commonly in India. So that is accepted with open arms. And second thing, there is no ban or, or most of the doctors and including the government has come out with the treatment protocol. And they also suggest like vitamin, vitamin C, zinc and vitamin D should be taken as a prophylaxis. So that's part of the protocol. So, so we have different task force and everybody has of the opinion that definitely this prophylactic medic medications should be taken up. And along with that, we always say uh, the stimulation should be taken. So it is like SMS we are saying. SMS is like a message, okay? So S is for social distancing, okay? S, M, and S. So social distancing, okay? Then M is for mask, wear the mask, and S is again for your steam inhalation. Hmm. So even and uh, sanitization Paolo. also, like cleaning yeah. your hands. Right, definitely. <clears throat> Paolo, fagli fare una domanda a Caterina che deve scappare. Oh, Caterina, I'm sorry. I thought that yes, you already no, no, left. No. It's very Go interesting ahead. because uh, Paolo was uh, speaking about his Italian grandmother. Same thing with me. I mean, the steam was essential when we had a cold, you know, put our head on top of the uh, pot that was with boiling water and covering and uh, vitamin C. What I was concerned about, and maybe we can go more in depth next week, would be the asymptomatics. How, how do we know who is really, how does the asymptomatic fit into this picture? Okay, so as we all know that uh, in COVID, around 40 to 50 percent, different countries have different statistics, uh, they will be asymptomatic, okay? So these asymptomatic patients are actually responsible for spreading the infection because they themselves don't know that they are infected. And thereby, if these people are also taking steam, so though they are positive, they will not be able to spread the infection. So that's very one important point, uh, which should be noted. And then those who have high comorbid conditions, for example, in India, what we saw, those patients who are having diabetes, those who are having diabetes, which is not controlled, and those who are having lung disease like asthma. So these are the people with high comorbid conditions. So they will develop symptom fast. And these are the patients we should immediately take care of because the mortality rate, what we have seen is high in this category of population. Exactly. So yeah, 40, 50 to 60 percent people will have symptoms, but may, others will not have symptoms. And nowadays what we have say, seen, there's a change in the presentation. See, earlier people were coming typically with, you know, sore throat or coming with uh, uh, infection of the chest and fever, but nowadays we are seeing people just come with abdominal pain or diarrhea. So who will think anybody with diarrhea having COVID infection? But when you take history properly and see the exposure and all, and then we realize it's better in this pandemic situation to rule out the COVID infection. Otherwise, these people will keep on spreading the infection. Exactly.
Thank you. Thanks. We lost Did you? No, 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 I'm still here. I thought that you had something else so that you no, wanted no, no. to ask the doctor. Okay. Okay, doctor, uh, you mentioned uh, uh, Ayurveda and you said uh, yoga. Uh, these are all uh, uh, well known uh, in India. And uh, do you think that by applying yoga ourselves and trying to do some uh, Ayurveda medicine, we should uh, be able to improve uh, 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 over and above what uh, you have been uh, discussing uh, uh, about this uh, steam inhalation. Yes, yes, yes. Because in yoga, what we say, the, the doing pranayam exercise. Pranayam is nothing but breathing exercise. If you search uh, about pranayam, and that's what we've been saying by most of the doctors will also recommend along with that. So doing pranayam is helping to build your lung capacity. And we all know the basic, this virus infects the lung. And if your lung capacity is good, then the chances, even if somebody is infected, the chances that he lands into complication is very less. And we have seen that those patients who were infected and the lung involvement was high, by doing this pranayam, the recovery also becomes faster. So yoga, through this breathing exercise, plays a very important role. That is first part. Second, you ask about Ayurveda. Yes. Now, if you see Ayurveda, Ayurveda has always believed in doing the basic things. So basic building your immunity. So pranayam definitely builds up your immunity as well. But along with that, um, the Ayurveda always suggests that something like steam inhalation or something like you know ginger, ginger, uh, which is one of the one of the very potent uh, immunostimulant. Uh, so. So in India, the use of ginger is very high. Uh, it is used as one of the spices in making the food preparation like ginger and turmeric. And nowadays people also use turmeric. You put in the milk and boil it and drink the, the turmeric. So turmeric will also again have, have curative property at the local infection level because it is antiseptic as well as it has immune modulator property. So it builds up immunity. And ginger is also used as one of the spices, but ginger is also used in common our drink. So tea is one of the local common drink in India. And it's been encouraged that we put a lot of ginger in the tea and drink it. So that also stimulates your immunity as well as it is anti-infective. So Ayurveda also plays a very important role in management of COVID infection these days. You, uh, I don't know if I misunderstood what you said, but I want to clarify. When you're talking about the, the strength of the lungs uh, that is going to be improved by doing yoga, is that only because of the breathing exercise or is the exercise itself uh, that it helps? Basically, what I'm saying is a person that is more active, a person that exercises uh, every day, a person that uh, stays uh, outside and benefit from the vitamin D that it comes uh, uh, to us through the sun? Uh, does he have a better chance uh, to be able to avoid uh, uh, the challenges that this virus uh, could bring to us? Yeah, indeed, indeed. So it is always known that anybody who has an active lifestyle will always have a higher immunity level than those who is having a sedentary lifestyle. So when you are active, and definitely your immune cells builds up more when you go out. But of course, you have to follow the protocol. Like you don't have to do exercise in the groups. If you're doing jogging or walking, we always advise you have to do alone, not in the groups. So getting exposure to the outside environment is equally important now. And of course, getting natural vitamin D through sunlight, is again important. And when you, when you are exposed, you get subtle exposure to outside agents, to outside antigens, and thereby you again built up your immunity. It's like something, for example, we have a drinking water and, and uh, we know a lot of people who are used to uh, drinking uh, mineral water, okay? And even if they come from abroad, say for example, India, and if they drink local water, they get infected. Why? Because their exposure level is very low. 
so if you start exposing yourself now you will again develop uh, your inherent immunity so now getting exposure is also very important and definitely those who are exposed to outside and those who are having active lifestyle and doing active sports their immunity will build up more more faster and their chance of getting infection will be definitely less than those who are having sedentary lifestyle okay that's good uh, uh this uh, really all of us uh, should pay attention to those things that you just said about exercise and moving and 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 uh, being a uh, do those things that uh, we actually as far as common sense really tells us uh, we do not really need uh, to have uh, a physician to let us know that uh, common sense uh, is something exactly that, uh, can, right exactly. Can guide us, nowadays uh, nowadays we pay a uh, huge consulting fees to know the common knowledge which we already have right that's correct but only oh. but only when you pay high fees that time you realize that this is so important yeah like uh, we have within ourselves selves most of the answers that uh, we are searching from somebody else so we should be able to rely a little bit more on uh, the knowledge that uh, god himself has uh, has given us and 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 rely on what uh, we can do without always uh, hoping to receive answers from the outside. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%, doctor. Uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, since we're getting close to the end of uh, the, the, the time that unfortunately I have available today, you said it's SMS, you know, you said uh, the, the, the distancing, the social distancing, the mask and the steam, which is, we already have talked at this point. We're gonna have more questions, of course, even the next time that we get together. But uh, I wanted to touch on the other two. Like, uh, is that required in India to wear a mask when you are outside? Yes, it's mandatory. So it is a rule that anybody going out should wear the mask for the simple reason that India has a very high density of population. And, and you never know who is a carrier. So best way, if, if the, both the people are wearing the mask, whether he is infected or not infected, we know if, if the, both the people are wearing masks, the incidence of infection reduces by more than 90%. So it is always better to take prevention rather than, rather than not wearing mask and venturing out in, uh, and going out. So it has been made compulsory in most of the states in India. Whenever you're going out, you need to wear mask. Okay, um, as I said before, we have been interviewing people from uh, different places and, and especially from Italy, of course, because we come from there. And there are doctors there that they're saying that the, the holes in the masks uh, is just, they are so big compared to the size uh, of the virus that it's just like trying to stop a fly with prison bars. So I guess uh, you do not go along with uh, their way of thinking. Oh, no, no, no. So we, in India, you have, uh, which, which are the, you know, seven ply mask, okay? The seven ply mask and the filters, they will really filter out the virus, okay? So we have the documents on that. So it is it's an accepted fact that N95 mask or N97 mask, when we wear, so it is definitely going to put a barrier. And as I said, it may not be 100% protective, but it almost takes care of 90% of your um, chance of getting infected. Hmm. Okay, so no, no, that's fine. I'm only, I'm only in, uh, you know, trying to find out your position because as we know, yeah. uh, there are different positions from different physicians. And, and also another uh, of uh, the things that they are talking about, and I'm always referring to these uh, scientists uh, in Italy and doctors, they're saying that uh, by having a mask for a long period of time, uh, you're going to actually breathe in uh, the carbon dioxide that uh, is going to acidify your, your blood and your system, and that uh, will cause uh, uh, problems uh, in the long run. Uh, would you agree with that or you would disagree so, with that? So, so for, for common people or the, like we, when we are going in hospital, okay, so I, we wear masks, wear masks, the mask close to four to six hours. But generally what we see, 
we limit wearing the mask up to four hours okay and then you come back and you inhale so wearing up to four to six ma hours the mask it is not going to affect your health so much so even in general population when you're out and when there's a group of people that time you need to wear, wear mask but when you're sitting alone in your cabin or in your room or house you're not supposed to wear mask or when you're doing exercise when you're walking doing a brisk walk on the road or when you're jogging we don't recommend for you to wear the mask because that time almost 30 percent reduction of oxygen consumption is there but if you use for short duration of time and use this very smartly it is not going to affect your health so much so you should know how and how much you should use yeah like i'm more concerned for example uh, not too much for myself because i do not at this point work so i do not need to, to follow certain guidelines uh, if you want to call them so but i'm more concerned about people like my son for example that he works in an industry that uh, he being close to the public he has to wear it for for six seven sometimes eight hours a day you know i'm concerned about those people that unfortunately they are forced if they want to keep the the job so what you're saying is as long as uh, once in a while they take it out and they stay a few minutes uh, breathing uh, uh, oxygen uh, it would be okay that's what you're saying yes yes they will be okay and and for common people uh, even the wearing plain simple cloth mask uh, is sufficient because they are not into contact with the patients who have viral load when we are in hospitals, we are in directly touch with a lot of hospitals. So that's why we wear N95 masks. So where the further reduction of oxygen is there. But for general people, the reduction is still lesser and, and they should continue wearing the mask. And in between, they should take break. As I said, okay, you take out the mask, inhale sometimes, and again wear the mask. So again, coming to the point that the, the right way of using it and the right amount of time what you should use is very important. Okay. And um, one other thing that came into my mind I wanted to ask you about, uh, when did this uh, protocol that uh, we are talking about, you know, like uh, the steam inhalation, which is actually the core of the discussion that we had so far, uh, when was that implemented in, in India? Like, uh, did it happen immediately because of the knowledge that you uh, guys already have by using Ayurveda, which is a, a different way of medicine that is used here in the West. And I personally, I believe that the way is better than the one they're using here, but that's besides the point, that's my personal opinion. So like, when uh, did, uh, when was this protocol introduced in India immediately or it was uh, on a trial basis and the you found out no, that it worked? So, so it happened, uh, it was not immediately. So in India, the Cases started rising somewhere in March, okay? And after that, when the first lockdown happened, that time, uh, even our the central ministry advised some general uh, prevention. And in that general prevention, one of the, one of the suggestion was uh, taking steam inhalation. But that time it was not taken seriously because it was taken only as a routine uh, prophylaxis. But when we did this clinical trial, and then we published our paper. And when the pa paper went uh, viral uh, in most of the parts of the country, so after that, it became very viral. And then it was translated into a lot of regional languages. And thereby, uh, the popularity of steam uh, was increased. And once it was uh, so rampant throughout the country, and after that, we have seen that the, dramatically the cases are coming down. If you see in Europe, there is a second wave coming and the cases are rising very fast in, in Spain and other countries, including US. But if you see in India, the cases are constantly now coming down. Though such a large country with such a large number of population, now and still, uh, and the lockdown is over, but we see that because of this, the cases are coming down. So we can't say that only steam has worked, but yes, what we want to say, that steam is definitely working as a prophylaxis and thereby we are seeing the results now. Well, uh, that's great. That's very good. Uh, uh, one, uh, one last question and then of course, you know, you can expand uh, as much as you want with that and you can, if you have any other advices that you can give uh, 
to our audience that would be appreciated. Like, uh, uh, I know that India is a very populated country, it has uh, a billion, uh, two or 300 million people there. What kind of uh, death rate uh, uh, before then you probably, like you said, you experience uh, this uh, uh, steam uh, uh, inhalation and, and they started to go down. What kind of uh, death rate did you have at that point, let's say at the highest point in India and how lower uh, towards level of uh, it, it went right now? Yeah, so in this, uh, what I want to emphasize that earlier the definitely the death rate was a little higher, but there were multiple factors, okay? There was no medications available. Now we know there are specific medications available for treatment of COVID, like remdesivir, favipiravir. Some of the specific medications are available. So those medications were not there. And in general, what happened, the disease was new. A uh, lot of places, uh, the ventilators were not available. And there are so many other factors. So the mortality rate was very high uh, overall. And in metros, where the density of population was very high, the moderates were very high. But afterward, then we had some good drugs available and, and the treatment was made easily available. The diagnosis was doing very fast because there are more testing done. And now we have specific drugs available and stimulation, a lot of people are now taking for two, three months. Now we have seen the mortality rate has come down very, very less. It is even less than 3% now. That's great, that's very good. Well, uh, doctor, it's been a pleasure to, to, to talk with you and um, hopefully we can uh, get together again uh, next week. Uh, if there is uh, any other av advice that uh, you can give uh, to our public at this point, uh, over and above, which you already gave a lot, over and above that, uh, uh, this will be the time to do it. And then uh, we just uh, uh, separate ourselves and we'll see each other next week if it's okay with you. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. So my advice will be uh, again same. The this this is a new disease, and and we are all learning every day, and new things we are all learning. Uh, learning. So so prevention is the best cure. We should know that. So as I said already, SMS you have to follow. That you have to follow social distancing, wearing mask. There's no point in debating whether it's health or not, but. But practicing wearing mask, at least when you're in crowd, is very important. No closed room meetings. So we always advise don't have closed room meeting. Have meetings in the open air. So that is known to reduce the infection. So still we are learning that whether how much it is droplet infection, how much time it stays in air, and how much time is airborne infection. That's why wearing mask becomes very important. Stimulation is very important. Along with that, sanitization, that is, Washing your hands with either with the plain simple soap or 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 with sanitizer will help you. And we also always advise taking some of the standard immune booster medications uh, till the time your vaccines are available. Uh, it will be very useful. And even when the vaccine comes, so don't expect that is going to give you hundred percent protection. Okay, so it is going to give you protection and maybe. Eventually, when we get good vaccines, it will have a higher percent of protection. But at this stage, you have to you have to follow these preventive measures. Other advice, what I'm going to say, that those who have got already infected with the COVID, so they develop antibodies, and thereby the plasma donation concept came. But that doesn't mean those people who are already infected and they have antibodies, then they should stop taking precaution. They should still continue the same level of precaution because nowadays we are seeing that this patient can even get reinfected and when there is reinfection we have seen the severity of disease is a little higher so continue taking the precautions and prevention till we have vaccines available or till we have some uh, specific treatments available so you need to continue with the preventive measures, what we have been suggesting and what we have been taking. Dr. Power, thank you very much. I believe your last words, uh, they were very wise. Uh, prevention is always better than curing so that yeah. we can avoid the problems. Listen, I, I know it's so late, uh, it's uh, two o'clock at night over your place. 
So yeah. we really want to thank you. And Fabrizio, if you want to go ahead and thank the doctor uh, as well, I think that we had a lot of information here that we can pass along to our uh, uh, audience. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, we try to to share the common sense uh, activity in the world, and I think that you have uh, too much of this uh, action. It means uh, thank you for telling uh, it all as a uh, uh, listener. Okay, thank you, Ciao and Jaihin. A big hug from uh, from uh, the Italians in Florida, doctor. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs>